How's it going everybody? Braddock here and today we're looking at my Apocalypse Bug Out medical bag. So why would you need this? Well, mainly because when something happens, maybe you don't have access to the local emergency room in your area uh, and you need to dig out of a bag. So this is something I would keep in my closet at home, maybe an RV, maybe somewhere off grid, just in case again, Something were happen. You don't want to be on the roads. You can't make it to the roads, uh, but you need some sort of medical equipment, whether it be pre-hospital or emergency equipment. Uh, this bag is kind of going to meet all of those needs. So a bit about the bag. This is by Voodoo Tactical. It is based off of the Black Hawk Stomp 2 bag. Pretty much similar and identical. Um, a few things are different just because of the stitching, but other than that, it's pretty ideal um, and identical to the Stomp 2 bag. Uh, so if we move over to this side, I have a quick set of shears. These are rip shears, a standard, what, 7, 8 inch shears. I think these are 6 inch shears uh, with a rip tool on top and then a little area here for your O2 tank. So Pretty awesome setup. This is like the poor man's rip shear to the um, everyday Leatherman Raptor shear. So this is something uh, I would carry if I don't have my Raptor shears. And then moving on to this side, two is one, one is none. Just another set of real cheap shears. Uh, on the front, this is something really you don't need if you're just going to be putting it inside of your closet. But we have a, a glass breaker with a seatbelt cutter and then a permanent marker, which is always super important. You need to be able to triage and label everything you've done, uh, whether or not you're treating a patient, casualty, loved one, etc. So notes, super important. Up here on the front, we just have a label here with a few other goodies of instructions of what's in the bag, and then all the dates, everything has been labeled, uh, just so we know all the expiration dates for everything in the bag. And so I like to base every kit off the March algorithm, M-A-R-C-H, massive hemorrhage, airway, respiratory, circulation, hypothermia. Of course, in this kit, there's an extended amount of equipment to uh, be based off of, you know, moving a patient off the X or out of your home to uh, provide further aid, uh, their uh, mobility stuff. So quite a few SAM splints, et cetera, which we'll go ahead and get into but let's go ahead and dive in. You've got two compression buckles on top and then two on each side. So you could compress this down to your liking quite well. Uh, so as I said before, every bag again is based off of the March algorithm. And massive hemorrhage is of course the first one. So I like to go ahead and label all of my stuff just so it's dummy proof. If someone were to open this, they could look at this and say, I need stuff for bleeding. And they move over here and they see it clearly labeled massive hemorrhage. Now, on the first flap of this, you have a couple mesh compartments here. And again, I label everything to dummy proof it. So we got some combat gauze here, um, some other hemostatic agents. This is basically um, an ALOX applicator um, or a C-LOX applicator that you could plunge into a possible wound and then um, you could be able to pack that wound. We have some more gauze pads here, both 4x4s and ABD pads and then some compact gauze. So this is all gauze in here that's compact but it doesn't have that hemostatic agent uh, like combat gauze which has kaolin to interact with that blood and help coagulate. Then down at the bottom we have some bandaging material, some 6 inch Israeli bandage and then another ABD uh, 8 by 10, I believe, uh, trauma dressing there. Moving over here, uh, a few tourniquets here. This is actually the Gen 6 cat uh, cat tourniquet by North American Rescue. So I would love to update this to the Gen 7s, but again, this is a bag uh, that I just kind of stow away. And I mean, it is what it is. So uh, a couple of those, and then we have the blue. This is the trainer, but it's still a Gen 6. Moving over here, we have hemostats of all different sizes, so depending on what you're doing. Uh, moving on, we have some Dermabond, which is a um, medical type glue to approximate a small wound. And then some rolled gauze up here. 
Now this is something to highly look into as well. Um, I like to micro everything I have. Uh, so we have some normal saline and these containers here, which you use to irrigate a wound. Make sure it's clean before you uh, close it up. We have a uh, hydrogen peroxide, some alcohol, and then um, some more peroxide. So quite a few stuff here to again, irrigate, clean wounds, get blood out of, close. Uh, a lot of great uses. Uh, moving over here, a little bit of gauze. Uh, so we have some Curlex gauze. We have some bags here for any type of um, bio, uh, let's say bloody bandages, etc. You could throw in that and stay organized. Moving on, we have a staple kit. So if you have a lack on your skull, you can use that to go ahead and close that wound. We have some tape and then a few ace bandage here, bandages here. Those are the six inch ace bandages. So again, um, as far as it goes to bleeding control, you're looking at massive hemorrhage as well, well as a small laceration. And then a lot of times, uh, based on the situation, of course, if you do have a lot of kids, you're gonna need uh, plenty of band-aids. This is pretty much the most of what we use out of any kit is just basic band-aids for small boo-boos. So that covers the massive hemorrhage or small laceration kit. Let's go ahead and move on to the rest of the bag. Our next letter in the algorithm is A, which stands for airway. And as you can see, we have a pretty extensive airway kit here. Not gonna jump into the whole thing, but we have uh, NPAs, which is na nasal pharyngeal airway with lubricant and tape. We have uh, quite a few OPAs, oral pharyngeal airway of all different sizes. Uh, we have a cry kit here. So if you do come across uh, somebody with uh, facial burns, maybe facial trauma, uh, the airway is not open, you can go ahead and do a crike. Of course, you need the proper training for that. Uh, we have, moving on to some respiratory stuff, uh, quite a few chest seals um, by Hyphen Vincent Chest Seals um, for an occlusive dressing. And then we have several uh, NCDs. Uh, these are all ARS decompression needles. These are the three and a quarter, 14 gauge decompression needles, uh, a few ET tubes here, and then a way, um, a lar laryngoscope and handle uh, with a few different blades uh, to open up a type of airway. So moving on, a few respiratory items. This is a pocket BVM. Basically you open this up and out comes a BVM. So it's super compact. You can use this to bag patients, connect to your ET tubes, eye gels, etc. So as you can see, pretty compact, doesn't quite fit in a pocket, but it is great for a aid bag such as this. Next, moving on into C, circulation. So a few items here, uh, we have different ways of starting lines. So uh, a few different gauges of catheters, both 18, 20, 22, and 24s. Um, a few syringes here to flush the line and then a couple bags of normal saline. So anyways, moving on from C, we have H, hypothermia. You wanna make sure to uh, prevent all your trauma patients, uh, regardless of the situation, uh, from hypothermia, because hypothermia kills. So we have a blizzard blanket here, and then to go along with that, quite a few heat packs as well. So hypothermia is really crucial. A lot of people overlook the importance of uh, keeping an individual warm throughout um, some sort of trauma event. So that about covers the March algorithm. We're gonna run into a couple of everyday stuff a lot of people see um, just in and around the house, at work, etc. cetera. So um, one of the things is mobility. You wanna be able to um, keep someone from moving extremity around if it is injured. Uh, so keep that stable and give them to a further help. So one thing is some type of a C collar. So here is an adult C collar. And then we also have a pediatric C collar. And to go along with that, pretty much in every compartment, as you can see, I like to dummy proof stuff. If it's not me going through a bag, maybe it's a loved one. Uh, pretty much with every setup, I go ahead and design 
and uh, label how to use a C collar. So some identification cards there, and then uh, back is a million different ways of how to use SAM splints. So if we go ahead and dig a little bit further, we have quite a few SAM splints here. So again, million different uses for these guys. I highly recommend, again, everybody check these guys out. I keep them in your bug out bags. If your kids are playing sports, this is awesome. So get them some SAM splints. We have quite a fit, bit of ice packs to go along with that. And then if we move on, we have a section here for burns. So burns don't kill, infection does. So and here we have uh, quite a few of these uh, burn dressings. This is by water gel uh, and plenty of different sizes here as you can see. Uh, and then you want to be able to wrap that. So one thing I've always used is a Curlex. Now you don't want to get Curlex straight on the burn um, simply because when you pull this off it's going to burn a lot, uh, pull a lot of that dry skin. And then uh, we also have some burn gel here. So for like minor areas here you could slap this on like a 2x2 two two non-adhesive dressing and then get that a light wrap. And then last but not least, we're moving into medications. Uh, this again is something that you more than likely will be using uh, most often than anything else. So as you can see, I like to, again, dummy proof everything. So this is labeled. And then on the inside, if we go ahead and open this up, uh, the first thing you'll notice in this bag is a mesh compartment here. Uh, in which case I keep all my stuff for vitals. So a uh, stethoscope, a BP cuff, and a, a few other things. Some um, notes here for making sure to note all those vitals down. We're not going to open that. That's pretty much of a cluster there. And then um, down over here, a few other things. So we have some ear drops, some um, glucose tablets, some um, bite relief gels, some other anti-itch cream, stuff for blisters, a thermometer, a uh, way to check pupils, and then a pen and a marker. And then also in this compartment here, we have all types of over-the-counter medications, ibuprofen, Motrin, aspirin, chewable aspirin. We also have some Tylenol, laxative, other stuff like um, Pepto-Bismol, but in a capsule form for tummy aches. Um, and then some a lot of good other stuff in this pill pack here. Well, that about wraps it up for today's video. Again, this is my apocalypse or grid down scenario type aid bag. Uh, given a circumstance where I can't get down the road to the nearest hospital or emergency room, everything in this bag is set up uh, the way I may need it. But it may be different than what you need. There's so many variables depending on the individual. You may have kids, you may live with elderly, you may have certain uh, family members that have uh, different uh, medical needs based off of different than what I may have. So again, don't go based off of this bag, go based off of your needs. But that about wraps it up. Again, I'm Braddock. Y'all stay ready.